Well, the new CDC recommendations on a third dose of COVID vaccine are causing a lot of confusion. Yeah, some folks aren't sure if they're eligible now, and some are wondering if a booster would be better sooner rather than later. Let's bring in Dr. Frank McGeorge here to help uh, sort all of this out. Doc, it has been confusing, especially with TCF already opening, opening now for immunocompromised individuals. Definitely confusing, Kim and Devin. So Jane asks, do you have to wait eight months for the booster vaccine? Why not now since it's available? Well, Jane, unless you are moderately or severely immunocompromised, the current recommendation is to wait eight months because that is the point at which some new research suggests immunity levels may begin to fall. Now, here's some more of your questions. Cindy writes, hubby is over 65, diabetic and high blood pressure. Is he considered immune compromised and qualify for the third COVID vaccine immediately? Cindy, diabetes and high blood pressure are not among the conditions that qualify for a third dose immediately. While those conditions do raise the risk of COVID complications if he became infected, they would not have reduced the ability of your husband's immune system to respond sufficiently to the first two doses. Stephanie asks, I got the J&J &J vaccine in April. Can I get the Moderna vaccine as a booster? I do not wish to have another J&J. &J. Guidance for those who receive the J&J &J vaccine has not been issued yet because the data is still being analyzed. While health officials will likely recommend getting a booster from the same vaccine for the J&J &J recipients as well, if you don't wish to, one of the mRNA vaccines would be an alternative. Anita asks, Dr. McGeorge, when we get our booster vaccine, do we have to get the same one we got for the first vaccine, or can we get either Moderna or Pfizer? The CDC is recommending that people get a third dose of the vaccine they received originally if that's possible. There are some studies in progress on the impact of mixing and matching, but that research is not yet finished. Now, some viewers are also wondering if the booster shots are actually different in some way from the original vaccines, and the answer is they are not. These are the same doses that are already widely available, so health officials are not expecting shortages as people become eligible to get them. You know, Frank, we, we worried about what uh, a two-shot regimen was going to do to the people's desire to get involved and get in the mix and get the vaccine. Now some, I think, are expressing concern that by recommending a booster, you might further discourage those who are still on the fence once they know now that this is a three-shot protocol. You worried about that? Well, you know, I hope that people are starting to realize that this is a new virus and we are all learning much more about it as we go. There is more data being collected every day and more analysis being done, and that's naturally going to change the guidance that's being given. In fact, most recently, the rapid spread of the Delta variant has changed a lot of what we thought we knew. I know many would like everything to be cut and dry over the next, um, uh, as far as the advice and never really change. But frankly, we're living in the middle of a pandemic with a novel virus, and the advice just has to keep pace with the updated yeah. research and hopefully the virus as it changes. We've, we've kind of lost uh, touch with the word novel, which of course uh, was where we were when this whole thing started. All right, Doc.